Hey, what's up, guys? This is my lovely, beautiful wife, Cyan, and I am Taisha. Okay, this is our first video of our uh, TTC journey, trying to conceive, of course. Yes, and we are so excited. So we are the Lawrences. We just a little bit of history. We've been married for two and a half years. It'll be yeah. three years in August. Happily married. Happily married. Yes, right. and we've come to a time in our life where we are ready to start a family. Yeah. Um, neither of us have any children. I am thirty-two years sexually years young. Thirty-three. <laughs> and um, yeah, so. In our lifetime, we have siblings, and they're having children, and it's just that time we, you know, we're getting older, we're not getting any yeah. younger, so we wanted to fill you guys in on our trying to conceive journey. I feel it's really important to get this information out there, because mm -hmm. there's so many other like, like minds, right, yeah. that need this information. Um, mm -hmm. It's the way that we were able to retrieve it from looking at other people's stories on YouTube. So yeah, let's get right on started. Um, so first things first, we went for a consultation. Yeah, that was the first step, basically letting you know um, what you're doing. Because a lot of times you think you know everything, you'll be surprised at the things that you don't know. But as far as us, we were pretty well informed already. Right, we wife, did a lot, did a lot of research. research. Was, right. So yeah. the first thing that we get asked all the time is, are we doing in vitro? So in vitro insemination is basically an insemination that takes place outside of the uterus. Right. It is a, a chemical pregnancy, so to speak, and it's done by a doctor on a slide, taking a sample of both the sperm and the egg, fertilizing it on a slide, and then inserting it into the uterus. Right. Now, we are not having that operation done. Um, I'm at a point where I'm only 32 years old. I don't need any type of fertility medication or anything like that. So what we're doing is a process called an IUI, which is interuterine insemination. That takes place inside of the uterus where basically we get our sperm sample and of course it is washed and cleaned mm -hmm. and then it is injected straight through the uterus um, up into the cervix directly to fertilize the egg. Um, right. It happens with a catheter mm -hmm. and right now that's going to be our next step but we haven't gotten there yet. So as I was saying before, we had a consultation on the 8th. We talked to the doctor about, you know, simple things like allergies or, right. you know, um, anything like that. They also have you to consider the option of, God forbid, if you weren't fertile, they always ask your spouse, if you're in a same-sex marriage, yes. if the other party would be willing to carry a baby in the event that um, it doesn't work out. So that was something that was asked on the spot. Yes. We did not discuss that. And were you yeah. uncomfortable when the doctor asked you that? No, I was. I, I, I thought that she would. I thought that she would. And but just I, so they know, what was your answer? I said yes. Like if something happened to her, my wife wasn't able to carry a child, I would give her a child and give myself a child. I would. If that's what mm -hmm. I had to do. Right, but you if know, it was her choice, was I'm carrying. Choice, you know, a lot of people would prefer not to carry a child, but you know what? I love kids, and if I had to, I'd do it out of problem. No problem at all. Yes, so those were some of the basis that we had to talk about. She asked me, you know, how was my cycle, if I'm regular or irregular, and I told her that I'm regular. I have been monitoring my uh, menstrual cycle since January of 2015 because, again, it was mm -hmm. something that we discussed a lot, so I yes. knew we were going to have to start charting. Monitoring it. And you know what, babe? A lot of women don't know. They feel like if their, if their cycle doesn't drop, once in each month that they're irregular like a lot of women don't know right so there's definitely period. a 28 day yeah. cycle and sometimes depending on the shortage of weeks in the month or days it can fall months mm -hmm. apart but if you're missing periods consecutively and then getting them back to back right. then you're classified as irregular it doesn't drop every 21 days 20 not 28 i'm sorry 28 days not Every January, once in February, once in March. It's right. every 28 days. Correct. So that was something that was really important. So that was the first thing. Um, I had to get some medical records released from our primary care doctor. Mm -hmm. We are going to a fertility center here in New York called Columbia University. Yes. It's a center for women's reproductive Very good reproduction. Center. Very good center. Mm -hmm. We actually got referred by our old supervisor. Our, 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 yeah. 
Yeah. yeah. Um, they were a heterosexual couple that were up in age, above right. 40. Right. So they took this option. They did go the in vitro way, and it was a success for them. Yes. Right. For so sure. speeding up to date, um, as of today, I went for my first sonogram, mm -hmm. and I also had some baseline blood work done. Mm -hmm. So that's the first thing that happened after our consultation. I scheduled for this day which was very exciting because very i had to exciting. go on day today is day three of my cycle and um when i went in i had no idea i was going to get a sonogram done i'm like for what i'm not pregnant yeah, yet i didn't know with that one. right so she went in like a normal pap culture how you would do that and um basically she had the camera inside and we noticed that i have 15 follicles 15, which are all which is Great. It's perfect. It's um, perfect. For you, the doctor's you, face lit up. Yeah, right. That don't know what her, uh, follicles are. They're basically the casing around the egg that's developing. Right. And some people who have to take fertility medication to um, raise their chances of getting pregnant, they have problems producing these follicles. Right. So they kind of get enhancement. Right. I, on the other hand, am pretty healthy. According to my perfect. age, you probably think my uterus was uh, 10 years younger, but I have 15 active follicles. Yeah. I have eight on the right uh, ovary, and then I have seven on my left oh, ovary. Cool. So again, this is just day three of my cycle. Right. So by the time day six comes, we're looking for these follicles to grow to a, a specific size. size. We aren't inseminating until next month's cycle, next cycle. Yeah. because we are searching on California Cryobank for our donor. Yeah. I know this is a lot of information all at once, but you want to fill them in on how the donor bank works. We are going anonymous, anonymously. Yeah. We don't want to know the donor for our own reasons. Right. Um, we are married, so of course my wife is going to adopt, adopt. our child, and for confidentiality purposes, we want to go anonymous so mm -hmm. that there isn't any other... Legal and, issue. Right, pretty much. Right. Right. So, as far as Cryobank, how we're picking out the donor, they pretty much give you a large array of people, right. and they base it off of celebrity lookalikes. Yeah, certain, which, certain ones. Certain right, ones, right, right, which... You know, I don't know how I feel yeah, about yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can kind of take your chances with that because a person could look like a certain person to me, but to the next person, he doesn't look like that person. Right. So, right. I mean, they give you, you're able to get baby photos, you're mm -hmm. able to get specific profiles about um, lineage and things yeah. like that. You know, their eye color, hair color, you know, they'll let you know the education level. Right. Their IQ, hobbies, things of that nature, weight. accomplishments, goals. Yeah. yeah. So, uh -huh. if you pay a little extra, you can get, like, a little biography on the actual donor. Yeah. But you, if you're going anonymously, you won't get a physical picture it's of limited. present day. You go anonymous. Things are, are limited. Right. Mm -hmm. So, right now, um, after today, which was, again, my sonogram came out really well. Yes. I'm going next for something called your HSG exam. Now, I don't want to destroy the name, so I'll go ahead and show you guys on film. And that is called your hystero, let me do it again, hysterosalpingogram. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's your HSG. Mm -hmm. And what that is, it's a diagnostic procedure which is used to detect any anatomical obstructions, obstructions or malfunctions right. like fibroids, mm -hmm. polyps, or Extra any structural problems in the fallopian, in the fallopian tubes. tubes. Yeah. So we know now that I'm fertile. We know now that my follicles are active. Yes. We know now that we're getting a donor, but we have to also make sure and see that my fallopian tubes are free and clear. Right, right. Now, with the HSG exam, I have to go in um, very early in the morning. Um, they're also using a catheter for this procedure, and they're basically going to put iodine, which is dye, within my uterus and release it, mm -hmm. okay? Now this is gonna be on cycle day five to cycle day 10. I right. scheduled it for Wednesday, which is in the next four days, days so. so. I'm a little apprehensive about it, but I've watched so many YouTube videos, so I'm pretty much like, I know what to expect. Yeah, ready. We're, both, we're both ready. See, yeah. The, the diet is supposed to completely, you know, go in, go in there and it's supposed to spill out. If it doesn't right. spill out, out of then each you know, fallopian out of each, tube, out of each tube. If it doesn't fill, spill out, then you know you have some type of blockage. Or right. Something. 
and we want to make sure right. that we don't have any blockages. Now, I did mm -hmm. see a video where a young lady had a small amount of tissue mass. It didn't affect her pregnancy. Yeah. She had a successful IUI. Yep. And um, so that's what we're looking forward to. Hopefully, mm -hmm. I have no obstructions in there. Yeah, and um, baby, you could. Um, yeah, I know I am, but you always want to make fertile sure. Myrtle. A fertile myrtle. As my doctor called yeah. me, a fertile myrtle. Fertile myrtle. So, yeah, that was a brief chat. Um, yes. Please stay tuned and definitely follow us through this journey. As you can tell, we are so, so excited. And, um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, you know, you definitely want to keep in the back of your mind that there is a possibility, just like heterosexual right. sex, there are some people that try to make babies for, for years and years, and it's unsuccessful. Right, right. So you don't want to be 100% gun-ho, because there is that chance of, right. you know, just like anything else, it could have naturally just not happened that month. Right. But, but um, the thing with insemination, you know, they're going, they're going further you know, up in, in the body than normal sperm would, 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 would start. Would travel. It's Correct. Right. So, it kind of gives us a leg up. Right. It's going to take the first time. I already know it. I think I so, it, baby. Too. Yes, it is. <laughs> So, yeah, we will keep you all posted. This is, again, our intro video for our first PTC. Yeah. And um, please do follow us on this long journey. And this is Mommy Sai. And this is... This is Mama Ty. Yes. And we will chat with you all later. All right. Later, y'all. Bye. Hey, guys. Hey, sorry. guys. We're yes. back. Oh, so we forgot Come something. Yes. I wanted to, very importantly, insert a clip from today's right. visit at the doctor's office. Give you guys a feel on if you're preparing to do the same thing, what you yes. should expect, what you think you should see. So, yeah. Right. I'm going to show you my reaction on finding out that I had to get our first sonogram today. So um, stay the tuned. The doctor didn't let us record the actual sonogram as it was happening. Right. You know, she so, told us we couldn't have the camera right, on the... Right. But um, before the and after, we got some footage because um, I want people to see this. People have to see this. This is real. It's happening. It really is. That's right. You have an eyelash on your hand. I do. So it's probably from me. Well, your eyelashes, baby. <laughs> All right, you guys. So we're going to try to do another outro, but we couldn't leave without telling you about those yeah. inserted clips. So stay tuned right about stay tuned now. Stay tuned videos. Hey, guys. So I'm ready to get my first... Um, ultrasound and it feels so weird sitting in this seat like this um, waiting for my doctor to come back this is cycle day number two I just received my blood work so now I'm gonna do a vaginal ultrasound for some baseline blood work and um, I'll be back Hey guys, so I just finished doing my uh, first sonogram and I'm very happy to let you guys know that I have a very, very healthy uterus. Um, yes, I have a total of 15 active follicles. I have seven on my right ovary and I have eight on my left. Which is excellent. Which is excellent, which means we're going non-medicated for this IUI. Ooh. I don't need to have any fertility medication. I'm perfectly fine. So my next step is the HSG exam, which is happening on Wednesday, and I will keep you guys posted. We're definitely going to be doing some TTC vlogging, yes, so we'll get our intro video up. I may separate it from my regular page, and um, I'll chat with you all soon. And the overall, your uterus looks very, very good. Yeah, the screen's gone yeah, now, yeah. but... No, man, this is so exciting, babe. I'm so happy. Yeah, me too. This is going to work. It's going to take the first time. I know it. All right. Bye, guys.